I'd like to speak a little bit about your wonderful book, While America Sleeps. It's 9-11 retrospective. It really delves into how we made or didn't make such good decisions or how we did or didn't integrate ethics into our decision making very well. But I was so struck by this theme of complacency. I hope everyone reads the book because it really is a very relevant message today about underestimation of the enemy, whatever the enemy is, or the challenge, and overestimation of our own ability to deal with it particularly in a world that's changing so quickly. And I'm wondering if you can talk about places today where you see that complacency is a particular risk and perhaps a particular ethics risk. Well, you know, I, I just happened to have just seen the movie Darkest Hour, okay. uh, you know, which reminded mm -hmm. me of why I called the book While America right. Sleeps. It was mm -hmm. a takeoff on Churchill's mm -hmm. While England Slept. Mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't agree with Churchill. But I've read about him on a lot of issues. But the fact is he was warning mm -hmm. the world about Hitler for a long time and people were discounting the danger. Mm -hmm. What I was trying to convey, really from a completely mm -hmm. different, more left-oriented, progressive mm -hmm. mood, was that our response to 9-11 started out being the way you would think you would want it done. In other words, mm -hmm. I thought the President Bush's speech- right I thought it was in, tremendous. It was marvelous. It I, was. I thought it was like one of the best speeches Absolutely. I've ever heard. And then somehow, for the reasons you suggested, mm -hmm. political reasons and otherwise, other agendas, we got diverted away mm -hmm. from that unity and this crazy idea of invading Iraq on mm -hmm. no basis at all uh, prevailed not only with the Dem Republicans, but as I just pointed out a minute ago, it was a majority with Democrat United States Senate that approved the Iraq invasion. So what the book does is say, look, we don't understand the rest of the world as Americans the way we should. We don't know where places are. I, I loved your chapter, Where's Tunisia? Yeah, it was a young right. man from Marquette. Right. I read his letter to the editor, Marquette uh -huh. University, where I taught for a while. And he said, you know, his headline of his story was, where in the world is Tunisia? Right. You know, at the beginning of the Arab Spring. You know, myself included, mm -hmm. we don't know enough about the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. When you're in England and France, mm -hmm. you know, for perhaps the wrong reasons, they're very aware of the rest of the world because they were colonial power. Right. But they at least know about places like Somalia. Mm -hmm. They know about places like Indonesia. Mm -hmm. They know about places like Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. We are lacking. Mm -hmm. We are lacking in our care about understanding the rest of the world. We are lacking in our ability to realize how important it is to know the rest mm -hmm. of the world. We don't know languages. Mm -hmm. You do, but I don't. Mm -hmm. My mother knew six languages, mm -hmm. and I discounted the importance of that. Very and important. It's very important, yeah. and we are, we are so far behind mm -hmm. for being this great country. And 9-11 and should have been the wake up to get us back on track Instead, we've been diverted into the most horrific domestic mm -hmm. fighting that I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. And frankly, it's mindless and simplistic in many cases.